Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Taito Ecology. And we are here in a brand new biome. This is part of our wolf experiments. Last time, we set up the wolf prairie so that we could finally, 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 finally see the gray wolves and see them in action and start playing with them and seeing if we can get a pack to really survive and expand and grow bigger and bigger and how big the pack can be before the territory just can't support any more of them. So we set up a prairie specifically devoted to trying to make as big a wolf pack as possible in the Great Plains biome. And now we're in the Himalayas biome because this is also an area where we can have gray wolves. So I'm pretty excited to try adding them in and they're gonna represent the wolves that could live up in the Himalayas. And this is gonna be kind of fun because we're gonna run this alongside the wolf prairie and we're gonna see which one is more successful or which one we just have better luck with and like different pluses and minuses over what kind of prey animals they can have. Here we can actually have a lot more deer. There, we can have a lot more jackrabbits. And I wonder if the jackrabbits may eat less. I wonder if the grass over there is going to spread faster than the prairie grass here. So this is gonna be pretty interesting to add the gray wolves in and see how they do. And this area might actually be hindered a little bit by the fact that I don't know if we'll have enough Taito coins to be able to unlock everything. In fact, I don't think we would, but this biome is bigger. I feel like just two of these zones is already almost as big as the entire prairie biome. So this should do us pretty well to start with. I want to try to play it fair though and kind of make the two areas similar in size to begin. So we'll go ahead and open three biomes and then I feel like that's almost as big. Yeah, I feel like this is almost as big as the entire prairie biome because this area, um, this DLC piece is a lot, lot bigger. And so I think this will be okay. I think this will be okay. All right, so in order to add our gray wolves in, we need to add in some of the predators, some of the prey that they need to eat. So I'm thinking musk deer, the moot jacks, uh, the tiny little mouse deer, um, maybe a whole bunch of pikas so we can get a whole bunch of pikas started. So this area, we do want to kind of make it feel a little bit like the Himalayan mountains too so we will add in some of the cedar trees and we will be putting in some of the okay let's get these down here and then let's speed up so we'll be adding in some of the cedar trees and we'll be putting in some of the bamboo even though probably nothing that the wolves would eat would eat the bamboo i don't want to add red pandas in and watch them get slaughtered by wolves but we'll see what happens all right we'll even put a little pomegranate tree over here for our little pika population to get started with they're going to need some mushrooms as well they really love eating mushrooms uh, but we do want to kind of give it a feel, just like we're trying to give it a really pretty feel over in our wolf prairie by keeping it kind of like flat grassland. I want to try making sure this still feels like you would be looking at the Himalaya mountains. So let's add in some wood apple. Like maybe we'll add in an elephant as a unique challenge. <laughs> just have an elephant in here. I don't think the wolves are going to be able to eat the elephant, but I think it would be kind of cool to see elephants roaming among the wolves. So that might be kind of fun. So we will put in some bamboo here and there. We'll kind of sprinkle the area with uh, like elephants, maybe some rhinos who get to live in here with our wolves. But the main focus of Wolf Mountains as a biodome is going to be trying to support the wolf population. So let's see what we can do to make that happen. Oh my gosh, this place is huge. <laughs> It's so big compared to the other like other biomes that you can start with when you first start playing. Oh my goodness, it's just gigantic. So we can just start putting down like ferns all over the place. This is going to be tricky actually, just like it was tricky to get started in the other biodome. I wonder if what would be best, let's try this experiment out. I'm going to put a whole bunch of grass down and we'll just kind of put grass everywhere and maybe some maidenhair ferns here and there. And then maybe some of these guys, maybe poppies, because poppies do tend to spread pretty well, even though they did that update earlier in the week so that poppies no longer spread quite like they used to. But I think what we'll try doing before we put anything else down to get encourage the grass to really spread is we'll jump time. I've actually never jumped time before, but it is a new feature that you can put in so that you can skip time and do that with your Taito coins. So I think we'll put down as much grass as we can and maybe a few trees, maybe a couple big oaks here and there. Like I said, I still want it to feel like we're in the Himalaya mountains, even if we aren't going to be focusing on like lots and lots of red pandas. I mean, eventually I could add them in. I just don't want to watch them get eaten by wolves. I love the red pandas. No. All right, we'll put you over here. Like the pangolins we could probably put in and the, the, pan or the wolves wouldn't mess with the pangolins. All right, let's put the little pika down. 
And then, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put this down too. And maybe, yeah, let's fill it up one more time. We'll do one more round of putting down a whole bunch of grass and putting down a few other plants, like a few poppies here and there. Things that the herbivores, the deer, would eat. This place is gigantic! It has taken us like a couple weeks to get the other Himalayas biome that we have open to three zones because we've been trying so carefully in expanding it. Like really carefully expanding it, making sure that everything's supported. So this is just kind of like jumping the gun for sure. But let's do this, and then maybe some honeysuckle right here. And then maybe another set of goji berries right there. Oh, and then we're gonna need pollinators. Oh yeah, if I'm gonna want them to actually do anything, I need to put pollinators down next to where the grass is or else then the grass isn't even gonna go anywhere. <laughs> so that's not gonna help us at all. All right, so let's put those down. And we'll get some pollinators, some moths over here as well. And some moths down here too. All right, come along you. There we go. And moths down here. Wait, did I already place it? Nope. All right, moths there. And some here. And then let's go ahead and we'll skip time. We'll skip time to see if the grass spreads or not. So let's zoom in on a little patch of grass. And then we're gonna skip time and we're gonna see if the grass spreads or not. So hopefully this will work. This is our little experiment. So let's see, skip three months, the riskiest skipping option, but the most cost efficient. So uh, that's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot to spend. Oh gosh, and look at all of this. that's just like showing up now. Okay, hang on I really I want I want to make sure I, I use up some of this energy before we skip time All right, we'll just sprinkle a few more things around oh, I feel so disorganized. It doesn't have the elegance and everything we've been working for in our other Himalayas biome I feel like the other one is much much prettier because we have really methodically made different places and we really have it all laid out nicely and the plants make sense when they sort of run into each other all right then one last one and we'll go ahead and skip three months and we'll see what happens because I've never used this option before you are about to skip three months time in your biodome. You will not be able to intervene during the time skip. Lastly, you cannot undo a time skip. Do you still wish to continue? Let's try it out. It may be a waste of my money and I may have just killed everything, but let's try it out. Maybe the pika have like actually eaten everything and maybe everything's okay. Okay, we're gonna have to see. All right, we earned some stuff. And the grass kind of spread. It worked. It worked. The grass spread a little bit. Okay. And are the pika alive? Okay, they're alive. <laughs> it didn't really work as much as I was hoping. Um, but it did work a little bit. Okay, so I think the moral of the story is that we're just going to have to figure out like ways to put down tons and tons and tons of honeysuckles what's gonna have the most leaf matter on it no edible leaves just fruit okay so not honeysuckles rhododendrian how much how many leaves do we get okay you get like a hundred leaves per rhododendrian what about these himalayan birches 150 so if we put down a whole bunch of these trees making a little forest may be our best bet for keeping some of the um for keeping some of the herbivores alive because, yeah, before we go at the end of the day, we're going to have to add in the wolves. So I feel like we need to kind of hoof it a little bit at getting a few things in here. And I'm probably going to use up all of my <laughs> all of my precious Dido coins before this is over. But you know what? This is going to be worth it. All right. So let's add in the teensy tiny little mouse deer because they're adorable and I love them. And then let's also add in the bigger musk deer. And we'll kind of put them over here, I think. There we go. I think we'll add in at least three populations, two or three populations of them. You don't get nearly as many musk deer as you do the antelope and as you do the mule deer in the prairie biomes. We'll have to remember that. And I do think that probably going for like the forest and then the goji berries do provide a bit. So you do get, you do get a few plants for the goji berries. Yeah, we'll just have to kind of like clear out what we have. <laughs> We're just gonna lose so much. We're just gonna lose so 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 much of our title coins But it just has to be done if we're going to be able to support these populations All right, rhododendron and then birch trees. We'll just kind of sprinkle all over the place I need to throw in some more bamboo hither and thither so this place feels more like uh, I feel like these cedars would be really really fun, too 
But I don't know if anybody eats these cedars. I'm gonna put one down. Yeah, no edible leaves. I think they're literally just for like decorative effect. But I feel like I need to put a couple of them down because that's where I would expect to see wolves in, in my feelings, like my opinions. And the wolves in the mountains are behind cedar trees. So I feel like I need to have a few of them down. All right, let's see, maybe some bamboo. Is that gonna provide food for like anybody? Um, yeah, most animals avoid bamboo. So yeah, red pandas, I feel like that's just kind of also another one of those just more for looks plants that we can put down. But the gojis are amazing! So we'll put down lots of gojis. And we'll put down lots of the others and I'm just gonna keep scraping through my coins. But that's all right, we earn those coins so we can use them for cool experiments like this. And I think this is totally worth it. All right, and then I do think more rhododendrian, because you guys are amazing with all of your wonderful, wonderful leaves that I love so much. More rhododendrian are needed, because I do think we need to add more deer and probably more moot jack too. This is the fastest I've ever tried to set up a biome. And I think we're definitely setting it up much more efficiently than we set up the prairie biome. And we may really have regrets about that when we go back to check on those wolves. All right, maybe a few oak trees sprinkled hither and thither as well. All right, eh, eh, am I stuck? Why can I not? Oh, there we go. All right, there you go, Alba. I thought you were stuck for a second. All right, and let's see, another oak tree. Because these oak trees do provide quite a few leaves and apparently they even fruit. So they would be able to provide a source of food from their fruit, which means I need to make sure that we have, let's see, make sure that we have like the, um, make sure we have the pollinators near them. Cause I really want to make sure we get plenty and plenty of fruit off those guys. All right, let's see, what else can we do? Scrape through our money, that's what we can do. <laughs> Oh, oh well, well, we probably are about due to go ahead and rotate through all of the different biomes pretty soon anyway. I need to stop putting down things that only fruit. I need to make sure I put down things that have leaves and fruit or else I'm going to be in trouble. But yeah, it's about time to go ahead and potentially visit all of our biomes anyway to see how they're doing and what they're up to and collect the money that you can actually get every time you visit them because we do need to collect some of the funds. Because realistically, we do need the funds in order to fund all of these big projects. This is very nice, see? And I really feel, maybe it's because by now many of you know I'm a detail person who loves details. But I really feel like if you just stick to sort of one spot and you really kind of go and try to make it look super nice. I mean, look how pretty this is compared to like coming over here and it's just like, yeah, there's a plant over there. Maybe one over there too. <laughs> It just looks so much nicer and it makes it really fun to be here and to see the ecosystem come to life or at least hopefully come to life. We're really biting off a lot more than this poor little place can probably chew by putting in so many things. Um, and we'll put in some more pikas over here as well. And that means more mushrooms because I feel like as long as there's mushrooms and pikas, there might at least be some food for the wolves because they did go for the jackrabbits in the plains. I was really surprised when we saw that. All right, and then let's see what else. Scrape through our money. And I do think a forest is the way to go this time. So focusing on these birch trees, focusing on uh, maybe some of these wood apples, focusing on the rhododendron. I feel like the, the forest might be the thing to really help the deer sort of pull through. But I do think that the um, grass is going to be needed in order to save the trees from being overgrazed. Remember last time we were talking about how the decline of the gray wolf in North America actually led to a lot of forests being destroyed and is still leading to many, many forests being destroyed because of how many white-tailed deer and elk roam unchecked and they're able to eat and eat. And moose were also a big problem in some parts of North America. Um, and they were able just to eat forest, old growth forest to the ground. When we visited Bald Head Island, as you guys who have been around since May probably know when we went to Bald Head Island and I did all those awesome adventure vlogs, checking out skinks and the beach and the deer there. 
Well, there's these gigantic, beautiful oaks on Bald Head Island that are some of the biggest trees that I have ever seen. And there's no baby oaks to replace those oaks because those oaks grew in an era before white-tailed deer really got to the island. And after white-tailed deer showed up, they ate the baby oaks. And those baby oaks have to grow for like 200 years to get to the size that they are today. The big ancient oaks who are all starting to die off are today. And so that's how deer can destroy an old growth forest. They may not be eating the big giant old tree, but they're eating all of the saplings that will one day grow into that big giant old tree. And it creates a lot of havoc. And it's really sad because there's no baby oaks to replace those big giant oaks. And they're still in the process of wrestling with the deer population as it is. So that's not going to be something that's resolved for a very long time. You can't just like pick up a giant oak tree like this and plant it. You plant saplings and the saplings take hundreds of years to grow to that size sometimes. So I wish Baldhead Island the luck. They're really trying. They're using birth control shots actually to control their deer population. And they are tracking down the deer and they are giving them birth control shots that will last the natural lifespan of the deer, about the seven years that white-tailed deer live. And it's pretty amazing because they're going to those lengths to try to humanely control the population and make it so that their land, their beautiful land, will one day, generations from now, not even in their own lifetime, come and and just bring that natural beauty back and I just think that's amazing. Anyway, that's my little rant on how dangerous white-tailed deer can be if you take the predators out of the equation and you make it so that you don't have any of those checks and balances. All right, so we're going to sprinkle some of this over here and then I think we need some more stag horns or stag stag beetles, not stag horns. Stag beetles over there. I was actually thinking of staghorn mushrooms because I was looking at mushrooms. So that's where staghorns came from, not the like staghorn antelope. All right, we'll get a moth over there and then maybe some more pika. Yay, we got a little bit more money. And it is about time, you guys. It is getting close to time to potentially add in the wolves. And I think we actually added in a ton more here than we did to the poor prairie. I feel like it's a little bit easier to, but that's probably just because I'm terribly biased to the Himalaya Mountains area. <laughs> and I know I shouldn't be. I'm just in love with it. I'm just so in love with it. And I actually feel like it's smoother to sort of learn and balance all of the things that are here than it is in the others. But I, again, I'm just terribly biased. All right, we'll put down little ferns all over the place too. And that should hopefully kick off some of these small level plants. And then let's get a few more of the rhododendron and the birch trees planted over here. And then maybe one more population of deer. Hmm. We'll have to see. We'll, we have a mouse deer population. We have pika population. And we have two populations of mule deer. I will add in one more population of uh, the mule deer. Is it mule deer? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the, or the musk deer. The musk deer. I'll add in one more population of musk deer over here to try to kind of balance the fact that there's only four members in each territory. But in the uh, in the prairie, you would get like 10, eight members in each of those territories. So hopefully that'll bring a little bit of balance to it. And then we're gonna add in the wolves. <laughs> and then we're gonna cross our fingers and hope that nothing explodes and there'll be at least a semblance of balance. And we'll just have to kind of take our hands off, take the gloves off, step back and see what happens to our biomes as an experiment. And then we'll come back in three months and see where everything's at. So let's add in as much fairy grass as I can possibly put down. Okay, and now I'm out. All right, so this is it, you guys. <laughs> this is it, I'm out. I only have the tiniest bit of money left and we're just gonna put the gray wolves kind of straight in the center over here. And we're gonna let them go. And it's gonna be gray wolves in the mountains. And we're just gonna see how they do and we're gonna see what happens to the populations here as a result. So. Poor little mushrooms are just not going to make it. <laughs> They're just not going to make it. Too many pika. Too many pika. All right. Come on, gray wolves. You're almost there. And good luck, wolf mountains. All right. Here we go, guys. And there they are. There we go. The wolves of the mountains have arrived. And oh my goodness, are they ever beautiful. Wow. So again, you guys can try coming up with names for the individuals, even though you can't really track the individuals. You can come up with names for the pack in both the prairie and here in the mountains. They're just so pretty because the rhododendrons behind them. That's probably what it is. That's probably why I'm so in love. 
And then let's go ahead and see what they're going to try eating first. Are you eating? Have you already consumed something? No, you're sleeping. All right, so the first thing off, the wolves are just sleeping. So there's that. And we can frantically, while we wait for them to make their first kill, add in like maiden hair fern and poppies. <laughs> Clusters of poppies to try to support all of the deer that we hope will live. I might add in like another deer population All right, if we can If I get enough musk deer Maybe a moon jack population and they can kind of like live off of the pikas as well All right first kill. All right. That's a pretty that's a pretty confident musk deer just strolling by there All right put in musk deer group over there as well and we're gonna keep an eye on them. Doesn't look like they're hunting anything just yet, but that's probably about to change in like two seconds here. And I should probably add in several more Pika populations wherever we can. And maybe, yeah, maybe some more fairy grass to support those Pika populations. So that hopefully the wolves will be able to survive. See what I mean about them next to cedar trees though? It just feels like that's where I should see wolves in the mountains. Oh, that's so pretty. This is so cool. I really do like this. We really should set something up for the big cats as well because I'm actually a huge fan of big cats. That's kind of where my passion where people are like, yes, horses. Yes, wolves. I'm like, yes, tigers. Yay, cougars, especially cougars. I have a very big soft spot for cougars. So we might set up a cougar forest at some point in the future. I wonder how many biomes we're going to end up with. <laughs> Probably a lot. Probably a lot of biomes. All right. So no kill yet. Up, 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 up. Somebody's running for something. Is it you? Are you the unfortunate? Oh, he's running for his life. <laughs> Look at the little Pika. He's like, no, I can escape this. All right, what about you? Nope, you're just coming to eat my Himalayan fire grass. A group of mushrooms has died. Well... That does happen when you have a bunch of hungry little rodents who endure mushrooms. Alright, come on, fairy grass. Alright, there's Pika everywhere. Come on, fairy grass, you can do it. Pika? Pika? And... And he's dead. I'm sorry, little one. I'm so sorry. Alright! So it looks like the first thing that they're going to kind of focus on eating are actually the pika. So that's good to know that they will focus on populations of the smaller rodents like that. And also good to note that I'm going to have to make sure I have some earthworms over here or else my pika are just going to eat everything. But there we go, you guys. So now we have the wolf prairie and we have the wolf mountains. And we're just going to have to kind of step back and kind of put our hands up in the air and let everything progress. And we'll check in on them week after week, just like we check in on a few of the others. And we'll see how they do. And I will see you guys next time. We will also go check and see how the red foxes have been affecting Bamboo Grove. And hopefully everything okay over there with my precious bamboo grove and then we can prepare to add in maybe elephants and tigers to bamboo grove so i'm really excited and i will see you guys next time bye bye